Hey everybody, welcome to my virtual campfire and to today's video. I hope you're having a good day. Now, to get lots of views on a YouTube video, a video needs to have certain ingredients. It needs to have a catchy title. And the more sensational, the better. There are an endless number of other channels that are better at that than I will ever be. But those channels don't have the guests that I'm proud to have on today. Now, this video won't gain the traction, won't nearly gain the traction of other videos because it is aimed at smart people and those who want to become smarter. If that's you, you're in for a treat. Kevin Fraser is an RV dealer like none other. Starting out as a boy working in the RV industry since 1966, yes, 1966, Kevin is quite possibly my closest contact in the RV industry and his ability to to see things before others amazes me. Recently, Kevin and I had the chance to sit down and I asked him about his view of the current state of the RV industry and what he sees as a possibility in 2024. And I got to tell you, some of what he said, well, it was a bit shocking. So we had you on not long ago. A lot of people responded. They love listening to our conversations and the, the market seems to be changing so quickly, the RV market. Where are we right now in 2024? And how'd we get here? Where are we going? Kind of, you know, give me a, a look from your perspective, Kevin. Go ahead. You've got two hours to finish. Yeah, okay. Um, we're in... We're in about the eighth inning of a market depression in the RV industry. The rest of America is in a recession, despite what the statistics say, but we're in a depression. And I'm very fond of that retired baseball guy, Yogi Berra. The way he would put it is that it's deja vu all over again. Let me explain. We'd be back almost exactly two years ago now. We had been coming off of the pandemic shutdown. Enough RVs could not be made to meet the demand. It was impossible. As we came into the end of 21, it became common in the industry to promise to deliver an RV that somebody wanted later. And so we were taking orders in late 2021 with a promise that we deliver them in March of 2022 and Cheyenne Camping Center had 186 names on those orders that were promised to a person on February the 24th when Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine and the bottom fell out. Most people won't talk about what happened then. It was pretty gruesome, but it wasn't unprecedented and I will explain. It wasn't that business slowed down like a recession. It Well, a recession is caused by inflation. Depressions are caused by deflation. And as we were coming into February of 2022, we had had such a run-up in RV prices that we were in a recession in the RV business but you still couldn't get anything, so people were willing to wait six months to get it, hence our big list of sold but not sold. I'm gonna to have to digress once in a while. Forest River is everything that we sell. And from 2020 to the high point of the 2022 model year, Forest Rivers went up about 42% on average. And I'm gonna qualify average. Average is what we sell. We specialize in things for the middle class, so our mix is not the same as other dealers. So when I say average, I mean our average. Went up 42%. That's less than Thor, but Thor was less than Winnebago. They went up more than that. So here we are at the high point of the price, and we have suddenly no business. And it didn't matter what the price was in March of 2022. It didn't matter what the bait was or what the fishing tackle was because there were no fish in the pond. If you'll recall, gasoline went to five bucks. And all through that year, all through 2022, it was just shut down. And it wasn't just RV retail sales to people. It was also production. Production went cut in half. 
just cutting out. But as you know, in our RV industry, we don't get any data. Not like the car guys give you. So you got no idea what's really going on. Mm -hmm. But we just have to survive that, get to 2023, and start our market research to find out what the market price is. Now, this is research that's done. It's the most expensive research anybody can do. So, because how do you find out what something's worth? You start marking it down until it gets sold. We found out that we needed to cut that overall price increase in half. And to Forest Rivers, eternal credit, that's where we're at now at the beginning of the 24 model year. Forest Rivers price increase in those ensuing years is essentially 21%, not 42%. Well, that sounds pretty scary, but it happened one other time. In the autumn, and I know you remember because you're so old, in the autumn of 1979, there was the last Arab oil embargo. In percentage terms, the gasoline went up even more than the gas in, from fall of, of 79 to uh, spring of 81, gasoline prices skyrocketed from about 80 cents to $1.20. Shocking, mm -hmm. huh? Oh, yeah. That sh and that shut everything down. Prior to that event with the gasoline price going crazy, RV sales had gone into recession. Again, we had ruinous fiscal policies coming out of Washington throughout the 70s. You remember those, too. Mm -hmm. Happiest man in the world is Jimmy Carter because he's not yeah, the right president now. anymore. <laughs> So yeah. we had we had recession creeping in, RV sales going into recession. We had the Arab oil embargo prices of, of, of motor fuel went up 50%. And by the spring of 1980, we were in a depression and we were starting to see prices come down too. And that that deja vu moment that that it happened before took about two years to end. And it ended when prices came down. About half the increase that was taken in the 70s away. And then we arrived in 1981 and we had a slow recovery. This event started two years ago, February 24th. So we're just about out of it. Eighth inning, probably, probably not. Now, there's a couple of things going on that are terms that are used in the RV industry that I'm likely going to have to explain to your listeners because there's stuff happening we need to know about. If I forget to mention what lot rod is, and out of trust is, you remind me to define them, please. So I will. Here we are on the very cusp of a recovery. Is it going to go back to 600,000 RVs a year like 19 or in 2021? No, but it's going to grow steady and soft. Are a lot of RV dealers going out of business? Absolutely. We're getting news about, well, this, this week we got forced or distress sales where they sell out to somebody or they liquidate. That's really bad. And they're happening to stores that have been around for a really long time. And we didn't expect that at all. Uh, on December the 19th, one of the chains laid off 85% of their people on the day. And we're hearing about similar, not that, no, there's nothing similar to 85%. But that we're hearing about big layoffs at other chain type stores. Now, We've talked about Camping World and the insidious things that they've done to this industry, but nobody talks about the really, really bad thing that they did. They encouraged people that had put together a pile of money to believe that you could make a fortune doing little work and providing no service in the RV dealer business. They encouraged people to believe that. What did Lemonis do? Why? He managed to sell a billion dollars worth of stock and still he controls 51% of the company. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful racket? It did but to Kevin, a lot of people. Who but Kevin, money. hang on. Yeah. Camping world, the stock is still, in, uh, in my view, it's incredibly high. So it's overvalued. And, and the whole market, you know, these, these super highs, all-time highs in the stock market, I... I'm not smart enough to understand it. It it's all seems fake to me. But if every if everyone believes the story that's fake, does that make it real? I don't think so. Yeah, that's but it came for a long time. Do you remember what happened to the Japanese stock market? It was as high no. as we are in multiples. It was trading at 30 times. And then one day, I guess everybody woke up from their slumber and it hasn't recovered its 80s highs yet. 
So we can't talk. The stock market is a strange collection of human emotions. If you're trading at 33 times earnings, there's no sense to that. The classic belief, if, if you've got 4% interest rates, they shouldn't be charging, they shouldn't be trading for any more 10, than 10 or 12% or 20 right. or 12 times. But I'm not an expert in that. But I can see what people were seduced by. Camping World, Marcus Lemonis and his partner sold a billion dollars worth of stock and they still control the company they started. That means they sold 49% of nothing and got a billion dollars. So some very recently rich people, people that had accumulated a lot of money by selling real estate in California or uh, buying Google stock at the right time or just lucking out on a government contract, suddenly they got some money they want to invest in the consultants. I've met some of the consultants. And yes, I know. I don't pay a lot of attention to consultants. Do you know that that's derived from the two Greek words to con and insult? So anyway, these consultants were telling them what you want to do is put together a chain, a string of RV dealerships. It's not a lot of work. Look, look at how Camping World did it. You just go out and you buy these mom and pops out. It's a natural evolution of a mature market. And you bolt this together as a chain. And this chain, you tell the world, the stock market world, is making gazillions of dollars in monopoly profits and you sell stock because that's where you're going to make the killing. Our firm, Cheyenne Camping, sir, we've been here 58 years. We're in the business to make a living, but a lot of the people we compete with recently are in the business to make a killing. Now, those but, recently, okay, hang on, hang on. I got I got to interrupt you here. I need to ask about these, these, chain stores that have cobbled together and 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 this investment that these people have made money kevin they've made lots oh, oh, and oh, lots oh, of no, money no 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 but in the stock their stock has gone up oh, oh yes who's gone public camping world the others plan to go public and i have knowledge of the two big ones i'm not going to mention names plan to go public and arrange to go public with investment bankers in 2022. The market for initial public offerings in 2022 bit them in the behind. They didn't go public. So they bought hundreds of, between the two of them, they bought a couple hundred stores. They paid for it with borrowed money at variable interest rates and it's hitting the fan because they didn't get public. I'm really surprised both of them are still around right now. But that was the risk they took. And I talked to these consultant guys. With me, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, you should acquire some stores now, too. Why? Oh, yeah, 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 you should, you should expand. You know what you need to do? You need to put up a fancy new palace to sell your goods in. Because it costs more? No, we're just in the business to make a living. But if I were to go out and buy a dozen well, that wasn't enough. If I were, to, brothers and I were to go out and buy 50 stores, then we could get a big investment bank to help us and we could turn public. We could sell stock and we'd be billionaires just like Marcus Lemus. In fact, some of the people that were consulting and putting these other chains together to do what Camping World did, some of them used to work for Camping World. So they knew the whole thing, except that except that so so what do you think is uh on the horizon what is likely in the rv world from the investment side from the stock market side i know you're not in a, a, a stock market expert but you, you've got a lot of wisdom you've seen a lot of things w what would not surprise you that we saw that we would see in 2024. let's look back and see what we saw in 1981 when we got out of the last re depression recession that was the last time it was this big. and and so many well even the weather's the same as it was then everything is dovetailing out what happened after 81 81 was a slow steady recovery it was a very good year for us and the 80s were good for us too because the 80s were kind of like the routine that we liked because we're both we're boring we like slow and steady and we like there to be good value and what happened steady prices steady production 
no wild swings. And this is throughout the 80s. And so which RV companies are going to make a killing? Well, nobody is. It's just going to be regular. It's going to be kind of stagnant. It's going to be kind of slow. Those stock prices, I think you're talking about the publicly traded RV companies. I would say the publicly traded RV dealer, the, the lazy days is too small to really consider, but camping world, I think their next big killing is to go through bankruptcy, but that's speculation based on what I've observed. The players like Winnebago, LCI, the other companies that build RVs and vend RVs, they're in for a steady period of profit making at reasonable rates. There won't be any bad losses. There won't be any mountainous profits. This is the kind of stuff that see, Forest River is owned by Berkshire Hathaway. That's entirely a satisfactory turn of events for Buffett's company. He likes slow and steady. He likes to enhance value and offer it. So we're not going to see the crazy ups and downs, but this patch is going to be bad. And who's going to go out of business? My best guess there on the RV. The, the, oh, there's a couple of manufacturers on a go, but if I mention them, they'll sue me for disparaging them. Mm. About 20% of RV dealers are going to fail. And they represent about 40% of the registrations in 2019. And that'll take us right back to a nice, even market before everybody got crazy. Kevin represents what I believe is the very best of the RV industry. Now, you may not agree with everything he says, but you can't deny he is one incredibly smart man. I mean, think about it. Just imagine. Next year, this time, poof. We have 20% less RV dealers than we do right now. I think I can see the possibility. Can you? I'll tell you what. It's awesome, independent RV dealers like Kevin and Cheyenne Camping Center that will weather the storm that's coming. And that's why Cheyenne is a wingman approved dealer. Question, are you a believer of the value of independent RV dealers like you hear me talk about? Are you? Or do you believe more in the giant chain stores? Either way is fine, I guess. It's just a personal preference for me. And what do you think of today's topic? Let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to reading them. By the way, a link to Cheyenne and all the dealers in the RV Dealers I Trust Network is down below in the description of this video. If you would, circulate this video among those who may appreciate listening to it and to one of the smartest, brightest people in the RV industry. All right, the wingman is out of here.